Okay, so again, greetings and salutations. I'm going to continue um, what I was speaking about before, about the hive mind in the black community. And I want to highlight how hive-mindedness... I want to say hive mind, I'm say I'm talking about when you're not allowed to have your own mind or you're scared to have your own mind because you are worried that for some reason you, you will be ostracized, you'll be laughed at, you'll be criticized, you know, you won't be accepted. You won't be part of the crew, you won't be part of the group, you won't be part of the community. Um yeah, and we've seen many examples of this um when we talk when people like to jump up and call people coon because they're not you know doing what black people would usually do what what you know we're not behaving thuggish or we're not carrying on a certain way that is considered black in you know inverted commas not considered black so we have to now reinvent what is black what is blackness you see this is what we need to get to the bottom of what is blackness so that's what the hive for me you may have another opinion about that but for me, the hive mind is when you can't think for yourself. You're not allowed to think to yourself. It's like, I don't know if you remember the series Star Trek. Um, I think it was Next Generation with um, Picard. When Picard, that, that one. Anyway, I used to watch it back in the day. And I remember when they had a, 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 a the Borg. Now, the Borg is was, in the series, was like a hive. Of in, and everybody shared the same intelligence. Everybody was hooked up to a central computer, even though you there were individuals. But when you know you are collective, you, yeah, you're not meant, really meant to have your own mind. You're supposed to be. You're supposed to plug back into the 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 source of intelligence, which is you know, and that's what the Borg represent. I could have it all wrong. I don't know if I'm speaking to any tricky fans out there. You might want to explain that to me a bit better. You might want to, you know elaborate on that but that's how I see it you know and I remember one of the one of them who um managed to escape the hive and I remember she was kind of she was a blonde woman you know had a banging body and everything I remember everybody was going on about how she looked but she but the the character I've forgotten the name of the character was able to break free from the hive and became part of the part of the crew of the Star Trek crew anyway that that's I, that's just an example so I want to talk about what happens when, how the hive mind in the black community affects us, has affected, has affected us over the years. In my last podcast, I did mention like back when we were children, especially in inner cities and, and, and places where it's majority black community. Um, when you go to school and you're trying to, you know, you're trying to make friends. So you try your best to fit in as much as possible. You start walking like them. You start dressing like them. You, tr- you know, you start like, you're, you know, so that you can all be, you start dressing like each other, talking like each other, putting same hairstyles, same earrings, same, same, same. You know, how you wear your school skirt is the same. None of you are allowed to be individuals. And that, and I remember that as a school girl, um, Feeling like, oh, I'm somehow different. I'm feeling like um, I don't fit in here. And, I'm, you know, I was one of those kids that was the outcast. Even though I kind of floated between, I was popular enough and I used my singing and my music, my music um, knowledge to kind of fit in to, you know, to kind of flitter around different groups, you know, you know, this, like in school, you have different groups, you have the popular kids, you have the nerds, you have, you know, you have the kids that you never see, you see once in a while when there's exams, the other times they're, they're, they're skiving, you know, bunking school, but I was able to kind of move around the community without having to put my a label on myself and say, oh, this is, I'm part of this crew, you know, um, but I did feel the pressure of I am not black enough. My hair is not enough. My skin is too dark, you know, um, you know. And I looked at myself in a negative light because of how other people saw me and spoke about me and interacted with me. And that is that is dangerous. So how has the hive mind affected the black community as a whole? Let's say this. Let's give an example. You have an example of a young boy. And the young boy is great at science. He is a science whiz. You're, you're talking about when he gets to university, he's probably going to be university standard from a very long, young age. He was, you know, or he's great at mathematics. 
or he is a poet. He's great with um, liter- English literature. He knows Shakespeare. He knows this. He knows that. All these things that are not considered black, right? You see, the problem is, is when we do that to our peers, we are... We are, we are weakening our own community because that child could have grown up to be an economics leader in, in economics, could start businesses to help the community. That child could have gone on to be a scientist where he helped people find, where he was able to find a cure for sickle cell anemia. That child could have gone on to write some of the best, um, some of the best, I don't know, literature, um, you know, so... Can you not see how when we stunt each other's growth, how, how it affects us as a community? Because the, what, we, what we create, what we, we create, we put out there is going to be consumed by other people. For example, if I write a book and it's, it gets to the number one bestsellers list, y'all be proud of me then, isn't it? Y'all be proud of me then. But when I was in school, y'all just teased me. Y'all made me feel like I was stupid because I knew Shakespeare and I knew I read books and I was, you know, and I'd rather spend time in the book than be out there messing around on the street. But if I now, 10 years later, 20 years later, I get to the t- New York's best selling book list, you'll be out there, oh yeah, I used to know her from school. Yeah, man, we used to be good, good friend. No, we wasn't good, good friend. You used to make me feel like a piece of shit. Because I, because I like books. That's how y'all stay. That's how y'all stay. And a lot of us have, have um, or had things that we enjoy doing. But because it wasn't seen as um, cool or crew worthy. Or, you know, it, you can't tell your people them that you like this. Because, you know, for example, and this is a f- big example. This is a really good example. I like certain music. Yeah, it may not have been considered white. It, sorry, it may not have been considered black. I wasn't into the hip hop. And I loved hip hop. No, I did love hip hop. I loved Prince. I loved Salt and Pepper. I loved Michael Jackson. I loved all of that. But I also love other types of music. I also listened to some of the other stuff out there. I wasn't into rock or anything like that, but I liked other forms of music because I have, I'm, I'm musically inclined. I don't discriminate. I don't sit there and say, well, that's not black music. How do you, why do you like that? That's, that's not cool. That's, you, you, you know, that's, those things are damaging. You're caught telling people that they can't be themselves because why? Because your skin is the same as mine. How is that growth? How is that helpful? And unfortunately, some of those children that did that to to us and some of those children have grown up into adults and they're still doing that to people. They're the same people that would be there talking about now, today, grown up, big big grown people in their 40s. They'll be there sitting there talking about sisterhood and this and that and rare, rare, rare. But these will be the same people that will be dragging our next woman's work. Maybe she's in the public eye, like Beyonce, for example. I did mention her in the last podcast that I did. You see, that for me, I look at that. I don't care if Beyonce is famous or not. I don't care if she's satanic or not. The fact of the matter is she put out a piece of work that she worked on and she did it, well, according to her, she did it with her mind. And I can't fault her and I can't dispute what she's saying because, yeah, um, she says that she's she's doing it out of love for her people. She's doing it um, because she needs to, she wanted to show Africa in a more um, positive light or whatever it is that she said. Now that's what she says and that's what she believes. That's not up to you to dispute. You don't have no right to tell her no. That's not what you meant. No, you don't have no right to do that. You don't have no business saying telling people how and how, how they should create and conduct themselves out there. These same women that will drag Beyonce and say, "Well, I've never felt collected to Beyonce. She's always something weird about her." Yeah, yeah, yeah. These same people will be in a sister. They'll be in a sisterhood circle talking about sisterhood. These same women. These same women will be there talking about sisterhood and sister circle. Now, if you was really a sister, a real sister, it don't matter if you agree with what Beyonce did or not. You would not run her work down because why? Because that's that's her truth. That's her, that's what she's decided to do. 
Whether you agree with it or not is not, not for your business. Whether you agree with what she's put out there is not your business. Okay, you might turn around and say, oh, but she's a star and she's this and she's that. Well, for me, well, and so what? That doesn't mean that she's not allowed to have her own opinion. She's not allowed to put uh, to, to be honest with to herself. It doesn't matter if she's a star or an accountant. Her work to her is valid and to other people is valid. You do not have the right to destroy her, discredit her, because it doesn't fit into how you see it. Well, that's not African spirituality. There's many forms of African spirituality. Stop being so small-minded. Stop being so small-minded. Egyptian mythology is also African mythology, African spirituality. Is it just Ifa? Is it just Voodoo? Is it just Dahomey? Is it just Obea? There's many forms. And we have, this is the beauty of this time. The beauty of this time is we have the opportunity to, to explore all of that. And we've not had that before. So you don't have no right to be telling anybody anything. Because you yourself was the other day, a few years ago, did not know who you were. You were saying one of these people sitting in a church. Or you were one of these people sitting there talking. Yeah? Few, you yourself is on a journey. She is on a journey. I am on a journey. The next sister's on a journey. How dare you tell anybody that's not how it's done. That's not what it's done. That's not. Listen, let people interpret the spirit how they interpret spirit. Your somebody's spiritual journey is not your business. I could, like I said, I could, you have Beyonce and her Black is King um, documentary, movie documentary, whatever it is. You may not agree with that. You may go and read a book from somebody over there. And, it, you know, it may be more agreeable to you. But you see, the thing is, is that's, that's everybody's view. It's not for you to take on board and say, oh, how dare you say it's Just stop. And it's this mentality that has stunted the growth of our people. And you're still doing it. And then you sit there and then you complain and bitch and, pl- and moan about people that are not white. Sorry, not black, white people. Everybody else outside of black people. Uh, when they, you sit there and bitch about how they stay. But w- meanwhile, within our own community, we can't even let people live and be themselves and create. They have to have a higher mind like you. They have to think like you in order to be accepted. It's not right. If you like Beyonce, or if you don't like Beyonce, that's for your business. You don't have to say nothing about her. If you feel like you don't connect with her, then and you connect more with someone else, that's for your business. It's not for you to drag her work because of that. It's not your right. You don't have any right. For example, I'm a tarot reader. How I read tarot may not agree, you may not agree with it. But guess what? There's thousands of other tarot readers out there that you might be able to connect with. It's not your business to be dead dragging the way I do things because that's how I do things. That's how I interpret things. It may not suit you. And if it doesn't, you're happy, you're, you're free to move on to someone else. Nobody's keeping you nowhere. Nobody's holding you hostage. You don't have, you do not own... You, you're not the judge of African spirituality to the point where you must be there telling people how to, how to, how to conduct their spirituality because it is their spirituality. Not, it's not just, oh, this is how it is because that's Christianity. The way you're talking and the way you're thinking is, is, is religious. It is a religious judo christian mentality that you're using to judge other people. And then you're there with your spirit. I'm spiritual. I'm spiritual. I'm, 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 no, you're not. If you were spiritual, you'd understand that everybody's path is their own path. That's not your business. You would understand that. But the fact that you're there dragging Beyonce is telling me you don't get it. You're still under this mentality of everybody must, everybody must behave like this. Everybody must talk like this. I want to see, this is how I want to see things represented in the public. You don't have no business doing that. That production, Black is King, was based on Beyonce's perception of her spiritual journey. And the other people that added their their bits into it and they added their their talent into it, yeah, they they also have their own, they perceive their own 
That's how they perceive their own journey. You do not have the right to tell people it's wrong, it's right, it's nothing. That's, you should respect that. If you're going to watch it, or you're going to partake in it, you respect it and let it go. Don't then go take to social media and then be telling, oh, she's demonic, she's this. Like I said in my last podcast, please, oh, let God judge. Let, you know, let God judge. Let Allah judge. Let Oladamare judge. You don't have the right to be there judging people and telling people. If, the, if it's the case where she turns out to be demonic, it, she will get what's coming to her. Let people live. Oh, but she's leading people down the wrong path and she's telling and she's making people and she's and she's this is she? So people don't have people can't think for themselves, no. Don't don't put everybody in the same boat as you. Just because you have a, a hive mind don't mean everybody else does. People can make up their own minds about what's right and what isn't. And even people out there that are Satanists, that's their path. Respect people's life. And then maybe you'll get more respect for yours. Respect people's views, whether you agree with it or not. And maybe you'll get respect for yours. Respect people's work and what they create. And maybe you'll get more respect for yours. Let people live. But this, yeah, don't, I don't want to hear no more from no more religious minded people that claim they're spiritual because that's what this is. And these same women, especially, and some men out there that I'll call Mitches because you're, you're, you're a male bitch, okay? You'll be the same ones that'll be talking about sisterhood, yes. And you'll be the ones out there that'll be saying, oh, my sisters, I'm going to crown my sisters because my sisters are this. Shut the fuck up, you liar. You're lying. You're a liar. And those ones that has to constantly be there congratulating, congratulating sisters every minute. I mean, I, I do that. I do, I do congratulate my sisters, especially if they do something good. And I feel like those same sisters do the same for me. And I know my crew and I know my people then. I understand at this point in my life that not everybody that with this color, skin color is for me. So, and that's okay. That's all right. That's all right. So can we please stop with the fake sisterhood? Before I go, let me say this. There was a post on Facebook for my brother that basically says something like this, and I'm paraphrasing now. Uh, sisters, could you stop lying and pretending that you're there supporting your sisters by, by doing public um, announcements and public this when really you're there tearing them down? Really, you're operating from jealousy. And it was interesting because when I read the comments I noticed that a lot of men see that. A lot of men see that sisters are fake. Especially the, the Yaya sisterhood people. They're all about sisterhood. This is why I said to y'all before. If you're inviting me to a sisterhood group, I'm not going to come. I don't, I don't, I don't deal with just sisters all together. I just ask a lot. So that you can all sit down and gossip about somebody else outside the group. No, thank you. No, thanks. Thanks for inviting me, but no thanks, okay? I am not about that. I'm not a part of that. I'm not going to be part of the mean girl crew disguised as the Yaya sisterhood, okay? I'm not going to be part of it. I was never part of it in school. I, I was never part of it as a grown person. And I'm not going to, I, in the, at my age, I'm not going to start now. Because I've seen the, of the fakeness. I've seen outside of the, cir the, sis the sister circle how people are treated, I've seen it. I've experienced it. I've seen the spite and the ugliness of people just because you don't fit in to this crew. And men see it. Men see it clearly. We're the only ones that pretend that we don't see it. Yeah? Men see that. That is fake. And on top of that, we're there saying, oh, black woman's God. Black woman is God. Well, if black woman is God, black woman has a responsibility not to destroy it. Black women has the ability, sorry, they have the responsibility not to kill, to steal, and to destroy. 
If you are God, black woman, you have the response. You need to take that, that responsibility very seriously. Meaning that you don't tear somebody down. Meaning that you don't use your power to destroy someone else. Your power is to build up. Your power is to nourish. Your power is to, to love, to share, to help. So if you're going to call yourself a goddess or, you know, or you're going to buy into this black woman is God thing, try and know that your responsibility, you have a responsibility to behave as such. You're not supposed to behave like a, de a demon, a devil. You're supposed to behave like a goddess, loving. And not to say that all goddesses, um, you know, if you look at the pantheon of goddesses, yeah, some of them did destroy it. And that, yeah, some of them did. But most of the time they're destroyed because out of love, some things had to die because of love, not to destroy, deliberately destroy something with a heart of jealousy because your heart is full of envy, jealousy, spite, bitterness, rare, 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 rare. What, you need to read up on some of these stories about some of these goddesses that you're, yeah, you're trying to perpetuate. And also, can I say one more thing? I just heard this come in. Daughters of Oshun will always be envied. But I'm telling you, daughters of Oshun, if you're behaving like those who are envying you, you have to really rethink. Because you have to really rethink, especially if you're not initiated. And I don't really buy into this initiate. I, 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 you know, I'm still speaking to spirit about that. Okay, so I'm not going to bring down anyone. The problem I have with initiations is when people try to put that on you to say, well, you don't know what you're talking about because you're not initiated. Then I have a problem with that. Then I got a problem. Because a lot of people listen to a lot of fake Ifa priests took, who took your money and, and told you what you wanted to hear. So be mindful of that. Yeah, this is why I stick with my ancestors, because my ancestors will always show me the way. A lot of y'all say you're initiating into Ifa. Some of you don't even have an ancestor over. Some of you don't even, even talk to your ancestors, let alone, but yet you're saying you're initiating into Ifa. How does that work? But anyway, that's your journey. So I'll let you get on with it. I'm sorry about the noise, people. Um, yeah, but anyway, I will speak to you soon. That's my two cents. And um, like I said, you don't have to listen to it. You don't have to buy into it. You can listen and move on like everything else out here. You don't necessarily have to, cons you don't have to take it on board, but this is my opinion. And if you're on my website, then you better have respect because you're in my house. So have some respect. So I'm going to leave that there. Have a great, great day. And I'll speak to you again soon.